worship you, Lord. We praise your holy name. We lift you up and exalt you. The name above all names, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we worship you. Be glorified in this place. Be glorified, Lord. May we humble ourselves before you and lift you up into your rightful place. We love you and adore you. We, we trust you, Lord, beyond anything we see with our human eyes. We trust you and you alone. Oh God, come and help us. May our faith increase. May our, our trust increase, Lord. Lord, may we experience you this season in a fresh and new way. Lord, may we all know you. Not know of you, but Lord, may we all say that we know you. That we are in a, a healthy relationship with you. Lord, many are going through difficult days, Lord. And we lift them up to you and ask you to be with them right now in this moment with everything that they are dealing with. Those that are hurting, those that are sick, touch their bodies, Lord, and be with them. Lord, we believe in miracles. We believe that you answer prayer. And right now we ask you to come and move and work in your way. In the name of Jesus, we're asking you, Lord, to touch those that are dealing with very difficult situations in their lives, in their home, in their relationships, Lord. And we ask that you would bring healing, bring peace. For those who are searching and looking, may they find you. And Lord, for those who aren't looking May they find you anyway. May your, make yourself obvious to them, Lord, this season. May we give ourselves to you completely. Lord, we are yours. We give you thanks and praise for all that you are. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our God is so good. We're going to invite the Giannis family to come now and, and light the first candle of Advent. It's in his name all we need. Amen. Yes, it is. And one of his names is Hope. Hope. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. We light the purple candle of hope. The star in the sky was a beacon of hope. Hope of a Messiah. Hope that God has come to the earth. Hope that God will save them, us from our sins. Hope that God will deliver them, us, from bondage. Hope is what kept them going. Today, our hope is still in the Lord. He came to the earth as a baby many years ago, and we have the hope that he will return again as king. No matter what we're going through, even though we cannot see the way out, we have hope in Jesus Christ, and we pray um, that we abound in that hope. Romans says, now that God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you, you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. In another part it says, for in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And then it says, rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. 
be constant in prayer. So let us pray that God's hope abounds in us. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord Jesus, we give you all the glory, all the honor, because your presence is here. And you are the God of hope. You bring hope where there is no hope. You bring healing when they need healing. God, we pray that you fill this place, fill our hearts with hope, that your spirit, God, heals our minds, our souls, our hearts, our bodies, that your power, God, abandon us, God. Lord, in, in your name, we give you the honor and the power and the glory because you are the hope in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace. And thank you for the hope that we have in you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you, Giannis family. First Sunday of Advent, hope. We're starting a new series today during this Advent season, and it's called The Gift Exchange. You know, life gives us all kinds of things. You might not call them gifts. They might be more unwanted gifts, but life hands us a lot of things, doesn't it? Some things we don't ask for, some things we're not looking for, but there it is anyway. But God... He offers us something. He offers us things in our life that can change it. And so we're going to be talking about the gift exchange where God, we can hand in some of the things that God has, uh, that the world has given us and give it to God and he will give us something new, something fresh in our lives. How do I know that? Well, I experienced it. My life has been filled with ups and downs. It's been filled with disappointments and discouragements. My life has been filled with all kinds of things, just like yours. But I've experienced some good gifts from God where he's taken heartaches and tragedies and discouragement and things from my life and and changed it for the better. And I praise God for that. Today we're going to talk about batteries not included. Have you ever opened up a package and got a gift, and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm so excited, I want to try it out. And then you see, batteries not included. Have you ever experienced that? You're like, ah. Oh. Have you ever felt that let down where you're just going to like, ah. Oh. Where your hope was put up there like, ooh, I get to, to play with this, or I get to try this, and then all of a sudden, no, I don't. Life is like that, isn't it? Where sometimes you, you get this hope and you're like, ooh, things are going to go this way. And then all of a sudden, batteries not included. Sorry. You kind of get let down. That's a reality of life, isn't it? <laughs> we, we sometimes are looking for everything to be up and good. And, and sometimes people think, oh, as a Christian, our lives are all good and everything around us is is, is might be falling apart, but our lives are perfect, and that's not the reality. We all struggle. We all have ups and downs, and we all go through difficult times. That's the reality. But in the midst of all that, we have something. It's called hope. Not hoping like, oh, I hope it's going to be sunny tomorrow, or I hope, in other words, wish something. Hope is that no matter what we face, even through difficult times, we're trusting God. And we believe that he's going to bring us through. And in my life, and my experiences, I, I have seen that. That God is faithful through everything. Now, things don't always turn out the way I, I think they should. But in the end, I always see how it was for my best. Without hope, though, we get discouraged. 
Without hope, we kind of get frustrated. Without hope, we kind of get lost, stuck, because we're not sure if we can, things are going to get any better. We're not sure how we're going to go through. We're not sure how it's going to turn out. If we don't have that hope, it's like never seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Without hope, it's like, well, if you do see the light at the end of the tunnel, you believe it's a train coming towards you, right? But that's not the reality. With hope, we know that God is real. God is alive. God is at work, and he's working. We're in a season of holidays right now, right? Thanksgiving and Advent and Christmas and New Year's is a season of celebrating It's not always a season of celebrating, though. For some people, it's a difficult time. This year, it's been a difficult year, hasn't it? Right? I think we can all say it's been a difficult year. At least it's been an interesting year. It's been a different year, right? And even when we're heading into the holidays, we just went through Thanksgiving. It might not have looked like all the Thanksgivings before that. It might have looked different. I've heard some Zoom Thanksgivings. I've heard of telephone Thanksgivings. I've heard of swapping meals at people's door fronts <laughs> Thanksgivings or small crowds. And some are even had empty seats at their Thanksgiving. I know it's not been a traditional year. I know we've had coronavirus and murder hornets and tornadoes and a presidential election. Do I need to go on? <laughs> we had a lot going on this year. And we also have the implications of all these things in our lives. Sometimes it's hard to see God in the middle of that, right? Sometimes we can get so distracted, so overwhelmed by all the things that are going on around us that we can kind of not have hope. Somehow, sometimes it just kind of disappears in the midst of the struggle. Today, my prayer is that we can leave here just feeling hope. There is a man who showed up at a Little League baseball game one afternoon, and he leaned over into the dugout of one of the teams and asked the little boy, "Uh, what's the score? The boy looked up at the man and said, it's 18 to nothing. We're behind. Wow, said the spectator. I bet you're discouraged. The boy looked up at the man and said, why should I be discouraged? We haven't even gotten up to bat yet. You know, sometimes things don't go our way. Sometimes we expect going into a game and coming out victorious, 50 to 0, but it doesn't always work out that way. (laughs) But when we have God, and we know that God's still coming up to bat, we know it's not over. We have hope. We're in the Christmas season, and we're going to begin with the shepherds at the Christmas story. And it says in the book of Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 8, it talks about these shepherds. These, it says, and there were shepherds living out in their fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Now let's pause here. They're shepherds. Uh, if you don't know the whole story, let me quick catch you up. There's Mary and Joseph. They were to have a baby. An angel appeared to each of them. They're going to have the baby. It's the Son of God. It's the Messiah. They had to travel to Bethlehem. Jesus, the Son of God, is born there in Bethlehem. Now, outside the city, it says there were shepherds out in the fields nearby. They were living out in the fields nearby. I want you to know that these were not just shepherd shepherds. You know, like, hey, I'm raising some sheep. It's a good good way to make a living. It's a good way to feed the family. Now, Bethlehem is an interesting town, a city. It's about five miles away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem is where the Jewish people had their big temple. You guys remember that? And they would have to make sacrifices there. Why would they have to make sacrifices? Because people sinned. The relationship with God and man is broken. And, and these sacrifices needed to be made. But the thing was, is a sacrifice was made for, for all the things we've done wrong, and then we would go and do more wrong things, and we'd have to come back, and it'd have to happen again. And so this cycle was going over and over and over and over again. And these shepherds that were outside of Bethlehem living in those fields were shepherds who were raising sheep to be slaughtered as sacrifices in Jerusalem. These shepherds knew, I'm raising up these sheep, 
they're going to be slaughtered at the temple. I'm going to raise some more. They're going to be slaughtered at the temple. And knowing that no matter what they did within that cycle, it was never going to fully fix that relationship with God. It's always going to be wanting over and over and over again. In the Old Testament, over and over and over again. Again, in the Old Testament, Jesus, uh, the, sorry, God said that I would send my son and he would pay the price for everybody's sins. But nonetheless, the shepherds over and over and over again. The Old Testament ends. No more prophecies. God gets quiet. 400 years, the shepherds raising sheep to be slaughtered. Over and over and over and over and over again. Could you see how it could be a discouraging thing? Could you see how it could get frustrating? And where's God? He said he was coming. God said that we were going to experience him. And we're hearing silence. Where is he? Where's God? Have you ever wondered where is God in this situation? That's what these shepherds were doing outside of Bethlehem. Now, verse 9. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. You know, we read right over that, but could you imagine if an angel appeared to us right now in this room? And if you ever read the descriptions of what angels look like in the Bible, I, I think it could be scary. The angels were scared. I mean, sorry, the shepherds were scared, but can you imagine an angel of the Lord appeared to them? After 400 years of silence, an angel appeared. Now, the angel appeared to Mary, an angel appeared to Joseph, and now an angel appeared to these shepherds. And it says, the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. God's presence, his glory, shone around them. They knew something was happening. Something was happening. I want you to ask you a question today. Is something happening? Do you believe something is happening? I know a lot has happened this year, and we've talked about that, but could God be doing something now? I believe he is. I don't know, there's just something in me stirring and saying God is doing something. God is about to do something amazing and God is real. I've experienced it. Him, uh, I, I know I've shared it before, but I've had encounters and I know many of you, we could go around the room and many of you could share encounters with God when you knew he was real. There was no question anymore. But then sometimes life goes on and we kind of know that God's there, but where is he in the midst of all that we're dealing with? We sometimes feel like we're alone in what we're facing. Do you, do you know what I mean? Am I talking to myself this morning? Do you know what it mean, feels like to kind of be like, God, where are you in this? In my flesh, I have my ups and downs. I get emotional. I'm going through this, and it doesn't make sense. And God, but where are you in this? I know that you're, you're supposed to be real. I know that you're supposed to be here, but where are you? <laughs> I'm not hearing you. I'm not seeing you in this. I want to tell you something. God is in it. God is here. God is alive. And the angels told the shepherds, hey, Jesus is born. And he's in a manger. The shepherds are probably like, what? Yeah, they laid him right there in a feeding trough <laughs> with, the, with straw and all that. But go, go, go find him. And it says in verse 16, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as been told. That last one was verse 20. I just want us to think about this for a moment. The shepherds, they're living their lives. They're doing their routine of life. Not sure what's going on in God's world realm. 
They're waiting. And then all of a sudden, something happens. A messenger comes to them and says, he's here. A messenger comes to them and says, he's here. He's here. What's their response? What do they do? Uh, it says three things. If you read the verses, verses 16, 17, and 20, it tells us exactly what they did. They went and experienced Jesus for themselves. He's here? Let's go see. Two, it says that they told everybody, guess what? We just experienced Jesus. And three, they went back and praised God. Now, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about this story of the birth of Jesus, and I have a question for you. What's our response going to be? What's our response going to be this, this season? Because here I am reading the words of a, an angelic message to you. He's here. He's here. What are you going to do? No, no, no. Not what did you do in the past. What are you going to do? I think we can take the lead of the shepherds. Maybe we should say, Jesus, if you're here, I want to experience you. I want you for myself. I want to experience you. I want to tell you something. The Bible says you can find God when you seek him. Would you seek him? Now, Bethlehem is a city, and the shepherds were told he's in the city. Imagine if we said, okay, Jesus is here, but he's somewhere in Lombard. Okay. And they said, no, 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 we'll make it simpler. He's in a, a feeding trough. Okay. Does that make Lombard any smaller? No. It's, it, it involved a journey for them, an experience. They had to go and find Jesus. But when you seek him, you will find him. If you seek with all of your heart, you will find him. And I'm going to encourage us today, in the midst of all that's happening, we can't stop everything that's happening in the world around us, but we can find Jesus. We can find God in the midst of all of this. If we are willing, for some of you, Hey, we found Jesus before, but you know what? We need to, to go back and find him again. We need to experience him again. Don't we need that this season? For some of you, you've never experienced God. I mean, you've heard about God. You've heard about God sending his son to the world, and that's why there's Christmas, we celebrate his birth, but you've never experienced him personally for yourself. Seek him. He will be found. I promise you, if you seek after God, you'll find him. I mean, he, he, you can't, I can't give him to you. Somebody else can't gift him to you. But if you do as the shepherds did and believe, and say, okay, let's go look for him. And you take that journey of looking for Jesus this season, you will find him. You will find him. Now, I want to tell you, that's not going to fix all your problems. In other words, it doesn't mean life around us is all going to get perfect. But what you will have is hope. You'll have hope in anything, and no matter what circumstance. Back in 9-11, you might remember there was a plane where the passengers revolted against the terrorists. And a man called his wife, called his family, and said goodbye and they got famous for saying, let's roll. His daughter wrote a book called Let's Roll. Her name is Lisa Beamer. She's the one who lost her dad that day. She wrote this in her book. Slowly I began to understand that the plans God has for us don't just include good things, but the whole array of human events. The prospering that he talks about in the book of Jeremiah is often the outcome of a bad event. I remember my mom saying that many people look for miracles, you know, things that in their human minds fix a difficult situation. But many miracles, however, 
are not a change to the normal course of human events. They're found in God's ability and desire to sustain and nurture people through even the worst situations. Somewhere along the way, I stopped demanding that God fix the problems. That's what she wrote. A woman, a young woman after she lost her father. See, having God and finding God and experiencing God doesn't mean all the problems go away. But what it does mean is we have hope. It means we know that this is a season and we're going to get through it. We know that God has a plan and it's bigger than us and we're too small-minded to understand it. We know that God is with us and he's going to be with us through it all. Those shepherds had to experience Jesus. They went and they experienced Jesus. Now, I don't know about you this morning, everyone listening here, but maybe you need to experience Jesus this season. Maybe you need a fresh experience or a brand new experience, a first-time experience. I don't know. But I know the people, if not you, the people around us need an experience with Jesus because it's been a tough year and people need Jesus. The shepherds, they heard about Jesus. They went and said, we're going to experience it. And when they did, they're like, oh, guess what? I've experienced Jesus. Share it with others. Let them know. Let them know. And then they went, you know what they did? They went back to their field, praising God. Do you, do you get that? They had to go back home. They went back to their, the thing they do. They went back, and they still had to raise sheep. They still had to send sheep to be slaughtered. They still had to go through that routine. But inside, see, they had to go back to their life. It wasn't like all their, their, they couldn't go back to it. They had to go back to it, but they went back with hope. They went back, and their life was different. Why? Because they had this hope. They went back praising God. Yeah, we're doing this, but Jesus is here. Things are going to be different in the future. This isn't always going to be. God is making a way. Hallelujah. So we're going to go through this, and I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know how many years. I don't know how long, but God's going to get us through this, and we're going to make it through. Things changed. Hallelujah. Now, I, you might come in feeling like batteries are not included this year. You might feel like, where is the power of God in my life? Where is it? I want you to know that he is the batteries in our life. He is what we need. Praise God. With God, batteries are included. The power to overcome. I tell you what, when I didn't have God in my life and I faced difficult situations, it was hard. It was hard, and, and a lot of the times I, my life just kind of crumbled. Have you ever experienced that, where you just broke down? We were like a car without the power. A remote control car without the power. A flashlight without the batteries. But hope is like God being the batteries of our life. Placed into us. And now all of a sudden we can approach things differently, see things differently. He's the batteries. He's the power within us. The Apostle Paul wrote this. We are hard pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not abandoned. We're struck down, but not destroyed. I love that. You know what? He said here, I want you to know, hey, guess what? Everybody, we're going to be pressed on every side. Do you know what that feels like? Seems like you have stuff coming at you in every direction. No, just me? I'm the only one that goes through feels like that sometimes? You feel like that where stuff's coming at you in every direction? And you're like, oh. And he goes, you know what? You're going to get perplexed. You're going to feel overwhelmed at moments. You're going to be like, oh. Yeah, right? He says, you're also going to be persecuted. People are going to come and speak against you. People might gossip against you. People might speak to your face against you. People will come against you. And there might be times when you're even struck down. Something might happen. You're not able to do what you were able to do before. <coughs> Excuse me. There are times when maybe you feel like you're just physically 
or emotionally struck down and you just can't go any further for, at the moment? Yeah, Paul said that. We're going to be pressed on every side, perplexed, persecuted, and struck down. But he went on to say, what did he say? He said, but we're not going to be crushed. Mm -mm. No, I won't be crushed. And I will not be in despair because I have hope. I will never be abandoned because God is with me. And I will not be destroyed. So yeah, the worlds may come at me and things might be happening around me, but God's going to get me through. And he's not going to leave me. And he is with me right now. And I know it's going to be okay. Praise God. He knew there were going to be difficult times, but he knew that things were going to be different. Uh, I love this story from Parade Magazine that talked about a millionaire named Eugene Land. He was, he, he was asked to go speak to a, a group of sixth grade students at East Harlem School. He'd been asked to talk to 59 sixth graders, most of whom they think would never graduate. They were going to drop out or fail out. He, he kind of came up with notes, and then he said he scrapped them. And he said, I just went in to speak from my heart. And he said to these students, stay in school. Whatever you do, stay in school. And then he said, you know what? I'll help pay the college tuition for every one of you that stays in school. And it says those words changed these students' lives. One student said, I had something to look forward to, something waiting for me. It was a, a golden feeling. I want you to know that the class that was supposed to mostly all drop out, 90% of them, went on to graduate from high school. What changed? They had hope. They had hope. And if we can put our hope in money, if we could put our hope in a promise that somebody gives us, imagine our lives if we put our hope in God. Imagine how different it could be. Imagine what God could do if we put our hope in him. I'm titling this sermon series, The Gift Exchange. I said it. Life gives us all kinds of things. You know what? All kinds of things have happened to all of us this year. I get it. I know it. Things that we don't always want or need. There's, these gifts cause, can cause discouragement, frustration, even despair. But God wants us to give that to him. And trust that he has something better for us. Jesus is here. He understands. He has a plan. He's going to bring us through. There's a boy in Pakistan who said was flying his kite very high, so high that you couldn't even see the kite. He's just standing there holding a string. And a man came up and asked him, how do you know your kite is still up there? The boy said, every once in a while, I feel a tug on the string. And I know it's still there. We can't see God, but every once in a while, you feel that tug. You feel that tug in your heart, and you know, deep down, you know, he's there. I'm believing today, that right now, that maybe some of us are feeling that tug, and God's tugging right now, saying, I'm here. Hey, I'm here. I'm here. Put your hope in me. I'm with you. You're, you're not alone. Your family's not alone. You're going to get through this. We're going to get through this together. I would ask us to bow our heads for a moment. God's here. He's with us. God, I'm just speaking on behalf of all of us, Lord. We believe that you're here. But Lord, help us to know for sure 
God, there are some among us that have never felt that tug before. Or some that maybe felt it and, and ignored it or didn't know what it was. But God, I'm asking you right now, tug. And for some, for the first time, I ask you, Lord, help us to believe that you're here, you're with us. Help us, Lord. We need you. Come in. Forgive me. Come in and help me to believe. God, help us. God, I ask that you would help us. For some of us who need a renewed hope this, this season, Lord, I ask that we would experience you. God, help us all to find you, look for you, seek you with all of our heart and find you in all of this and know that you're there. Help us to not only experience you, but to share it with others and tell them. And go into our workplaces and go into our homes and go to the places that we go knowing that you're with us. Lord, remind us of that today. Change our lives. Oh God, thank you for what you're doing and what is to come. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.